welcome to the class by ravindra babu rawla so today we are going to discuss theory of computation toc and uh, before starting the class i would like to tell you few points first of all this class is only about get so i am not going to discuss all possible theorems all possible proofs and conjectures i'll be discussing mainly uh, about uh, get so the main intention of this class is to help you in answering all the gate questions so i'll be mostly interested in discussing the techniques and uh, maybe some important methods using which you'll be able to answer all the gate questions i'm not going to discuss all the proofs all the theorems all the conjectures that is the first important point and the second important point when you are watching this video if you don't understand anything you can stop it there go back and listen to the point again and come back to the next topic right and uh, i will even give you some time to take down the notes even if i didn't give you any time to take down the notes you can just pause the video write the important points or maybe take a detailed notes and then continue and even if you don't understand some few problems when i'm teaching uh, don't worry just go through the complete video maybe finish off the entire subject definitely you will understand everything by the end so if you don't understand anything at any point don't worry just finish off the video we shall you know uh, you can again view the video and then you can understand it okay so let me start the subject today i'm going to discuss toc theory of computation t means theory o means of c means computation so by this name you must be understanding that this is something about a uh, computation so what is computation computation is nothing but any task that can be performed by a calculator or a computer so we are going to mathematically model a computer or any machine in general and then we are going to study the theory about it which means what are the capabilities of this machine what are the problems that could be solved by this machine and what are the uh, limitations of such a machine okay so the basics of this subject are i'm going to discuss all the basics now right first of all the basics of this symbol is the basic of this subject is a symbol what is a symbol symbol is the basic building block in this subject of toc and a symbol can be any letter like this or anything even you can have pix this is a symbol from a symbol we can form alphabet this is generally represented by sigma sigma is also called as alphabet so the alphabet is nothing but some collection of these symbols for example a comma b now once if you define the alphabet all the strings okay what is a string i am going to discuss it everything will be based on this set this predefined set called alphabet so you can this you can have any number of alphabet any number of symbols in the alphabet in this sense you can even have a b c or you can even have 0 1 or you can even have 0 1 to 9 it is a finite set and it can be anything okay and from the alphabet we are going to discuss a string a string is a sequence of the symbols which is nothing but example is let us say a if alphabet is a comma b small a is a string over this alphabet which is of length 1 and small b is also a string of alphabet which is of length 1 and a a is also a string of the alphabet which is of length 2 a b b c so on so maybe if you consider this alphabet some of the interesting questions are how many strings of length n are possible over this alphabet 
how many strings of length 2 are possible over this alphabet length 2 ok so you can say a a a b b a b b which means 4 now I am asking you how many strings of length n are possible length n are possible we have n blank spaces and we have two options to fill in with right so what are the two options either a or b either a or b so on which means 2 into 2 into 2 into so on n times so which is 2 power n so in fact you can even extend this concept to any alphabet since we have only two symbols in this alphabet we have got 2 power n so in general if you have n symbols or let us say the number of sigmas in this sigma if they are represented by mod sigma then the number of strings of length n possible over sigma is sigma power n sigma power n so just think about uh, just revise what we have seen till now first thing is symbol what is a symbol symbol is the smallest building block in toc and if you take few symbols we can form an alphabet once we have defined an alphabet we are going to form strings using only the symbols in that alphabet so symbol alphabet and string okay now using this i'm going to define few more things next thing is language language what is a language so we know what a string is even if you consider english language english language is nothing but collection of words isn't it so in toc a language is nothing but collection of strings isn't it so for example let us say sigma equal to a comma b then languages can be defined like this language l1 equal to you can represent it say set of all strings of length 2 so using this alphabet sigma what are set of all strings of length 2 we can form so definitely the set is going to be a a a b b a b b so if you can check it if sigma is a comma b then the set of all strings of length 2 is nothing but a a a b so on 4 and in fact this set is a finite set so i can call that l1 is a finite language okay so let us define one more language l2 let us say l2 is set of all strings of length maybe 3 set of all strings of length 3 over the same alphabet sigma sigma equal to a comma b then l2 is going to be a a a a a b a b a a b b b a a b a b b b a b b b right so there are eight strings again this l2 is also finite let us say l3 l3 is let's define it like this set of all strings over the same alphabet sigma equal to a comma b where each string starts with 
ए सो दट ईक्वल टू ई एम इंट्रस्टेड इन सेट आफ आल स्ट्रिंग वेर ई स्ट्रिंग शुड स्टार्ट वित् ए सो दि स्मॉल स्ट्रिंग विच स्टार्ट वित् ए इज स्म ए राइट एंड दि नेक्स्ट बिगेस्ट स्ट्रिंग विच स्टार्ट वित् ए इज either a a or a b and the next string which starts with a see starting with a starting with a starting with a and the next string which starts with a is a followed by a a or a followed by a b or a followed by b a or a followed by b b so on so on so if you look at this language l3 L3 is infinite. If you look at these languages L1 and L2, they are finite. So now you have seen that a language which can be formed over a sigma, which can be formed over a alphabet, can be finite or infinite. Okay, please make a note of this. I'll be moving on to the next topic. Powers of sigma. So first thing is sigma power one. So if let us say we have defined sigma as a comma b, which means our input alphabet contains only two symbols, small a and small b, only two symbols. Now sigma power one. Sigma power one is nothing but set of all strings which can be formed over a comma b, which are of length exactly one. Again. Sigma for one is set of all strings over sigma of length exactly one, exactly one. Okay. So they are simply a and b. So we can extend this definition as sigma square. Sigma square equal to Sigma concatenated with sigma, that is nothing but a comma b concatenated with a comma b, that equal to. So how can I concatenate these two sets? Is one a concatenated with a is a a, a concatenated with b is a b, b concatenated with a is b a, b concatenated with b is b b. set of all strings and all these strings are always formed over the same alphabet so i am not going to mention it all these strings of length 2 okay and the next one is sigma cube so as you might have guessed by now sigma cube is nothing but all the strings of length 3 and there will be exactly and if you look at it the sigma cube is set of all strings of length 3 and the cardinality of this set is going to be 8 so on sigma power n sigma power n is set of all strings of length n which is nothing but n length strings n length strings so let us say sigma power 0 Sigma power zero is set of all strings of length zero. Set of all strings of length zero. So the smallest string, which is of length zero, is sigma power zero contains a special symbol called epsilon. so it is also called as a null string 
and I am going to use epsilon this symbol to represent a string of length 0 this is a special symbol this one is a special symbol of length 0 so just remember that epsilon is a special symbol of length 0 and I can even write it like this length of epsilon is 0 and everything else is same right so string is you have to come you know you have to just uh, see the number of symbols and then you can say the length of the string but only for sig for epsilon just remember that the length of epsilon is 0 okay so if you want to make a note of it please do it i'll be moving on to the next topic next important concept is sigma star so sigma star is nothing but in place of star you can substitute any number starting from zero again in place of star you can substitute any number starting from zero so sigma power star is sigma power zero union sigma power one union sigma power two so on so what is sigma power zero as you know sigma power 0 is simply 0 let us define sigma first sigma for this question is a comma b and the sigma can change from question to question okay so in this question for sigma star it is going to be sigma power 0 is going to be epsilon union sigma power 1 is going to be a comma b union sigma power 2 is going to be a a a b b a b b so on finite or infinite obviously it is infinite and if you see this um, maybe if by looking at this definition or by looking at these sets you can conclude that sigma star is nothing but set of all strings possible over a comma b which means set of all strings possible over a comma b of all lengths so maybe you can call it as the mother of all languages or maybe you can call it as the universal set so sigma star contains all possible strings possible over a comma b sigma star contains everything everything that includes a comma b finite or infinite obviously it is infinite okay so this is about sigma star once we define sigma and sigma star next thing is we can define a language so we have already seen that language l1 l2 and l3 previously are nothing but sets of strings l1 and l2 are finite and l3 was infinite i mean in the previous example if you if you can remember it so we have already seen that there are some finite languages and there are some infinite languages now you can see this either this l1 or l2 or l3 are actually parts are present in this so i can even write it like this so l1 is actually a subset of sigma star l2 is also a subset of sigma star and l3 is also a subset of sigma star okay so now we have languages we have sigma which is alphabet we have sigma star which is set of all strings possible over the alphabet and then we have chosen some subsets which are nothing but the languages so a language is nothing but any subset it can be finite or infinite which you should be able to define precisely and uh, these are these are all the languages possible over sigma star are there are there are how many languages are possible over sigma star infinite number of strings possible over sigma is infinite and the number of languages that are possible over sigma star are infinite and now the question is why are we discussing about strings and why are we discussing about languages where are we going to use it in practice there are many applications there are many practical applications but i would like to take just one example and tell you where we are going to use them at practice